Okay, guys, here we go. Meditation, everybody hands up. Good, close your fists, wrap it around, bring it down to your navel. All right, we're gonna go left and right, sitting left and right, sit, left. I've always looked at firearms training as a form of martial arts. In that world, people spend hours perfecting a fighting craft, yet no one thinks they're nuts. Average people think hand-to-hand -hand combat is more a pursuit of accomplishment than preparing to beat up the next dude he runs into in a tap-out t-shirt. But if you tell someone you're taking firearms classes on a regular basis, they look at you like you're a potential mass murderer. They'll get lost in the fear of knowing someone can shoot and handle a gun really well, but won't bat an eye at a doctor who's a third-degree black belt and could kill them with a single blow. Yes, part of the reason why people train with a gun is for self-defense but they also just want to be good shooters for the sake of it. We all don't have fantasies about barrel rolling into a Wells Fargo bank robbery and shooting all the robbers. Okay, maybe I do sometimes. It's about gaining a sense of accomplishment, doing something you love. The focus, the discipline, and respect for the firearm needed to become a great shooter easily crosses over into other parts of your life. No one may ever see you get a drill right after working on it for hours, and they don't really care because perfecting a craft is not always about having the world see it. Sometimes it's enough to know you were able to accomplish it. Learning to manipulate and use a gun with extreme proficiency is an art form, and it's time we start talking about it that way. Nothing exists beyond this point right now but your survival, your own self. Why do you train? I train because I have a connection to reality, and I understand the threats that exist, I understand the world that we live in, and the chances of getting into a confrontation that are out there. Because I'm chasing that dream. I want to be the best. I want to be able to go out there and compete and dominate if I could. It's fun, man. It's not work. People say it's uh, boring. I'm like, no, dude, it's a lot of freaking fun. Yeah. I'm going to be the last person that anybody ever tries to attack and get away with it because of what I know and what I want to do to protect myself, my family, and those that are around me that are innocent. So why is it important for you to be the best? It ties into keeping there and making my family proud of me. That they, Because they truly believe in what I do and they support me 100%, my wife, my, my parents. If there's one person in the gun community that I can most relate to when it comes to shooting, it's Michelle Viscusi. In case you don't already know, Michelle Viscusi is a professional competition shooter for Team Glock. Michelle's rise in the competition world was a unique one in that I literally watched her rise from being a questionable shooter to a really good one. As a shooter, the Michelle that I know today is not the same Michelle I knew back when I was first writing blog posts trying to figure out where the hell she came from. I watched Michelle turn into a great shooter the same way a lot of people watch me go from a horrible shooter to a decent shooter with great shooter tendencies. So what's going on with you? Not too much. You are you are Miss Glock Girl. Right. Can I call you that? No? Sure. Okay, Miss Glock Girl. <laughs> so as Miss Glock Girl, you got any competitions coming up? Yeah, I actually have a match next weekend. Okay. And that's in Utah. What type of shooting are you gonna be doing in this competition? So in this competition, like the things that I train for before a big match, mm -hmm. um, I definitely work on my movement. That's okay. a big thing, um, running a course. So you could start from point A and end at point B. Okay. That's 20 yards away, but you still need to work on movement, getting there quick and fast, mm -hmm. and also being accurate. So I work on accuracy. Um, I also work on transitioning from target to target and like little things like uh, just drawing and working on um, basic things like that. Okay. But yeah. So I think we've reached a point now where we don't have any more ammo. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go shoot this. All right.
So what we're gonna shoot, just to start out, like something basic at the mm -hmm. range when you're just getting out and starting, um, just working on your draws. Okay, so typical practice session, if you know you have a competition coming up, right. how long would you be out here? Um, I normally spend about an hour to two hours out here by myself. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna stand back, I'm All gonna right. let you do what you do. All right. I may or may not learn something, I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Shooter ready? Stand by. 130. Slow. Oh, damn. Shooter ready? Stand by. Oh. We didn't see that. Nobody saw that. I'm, I, the reason why I'm shaking my head up and down, I really don't know what these times mean. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what's fast or what's slow. It looks fast to me, feels fast to me, yeah. which is kind of how I shoot. Yeah. Um, I think I kind of want to try my hand at it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Shooter ready. Ready. Stand by. <laughs> what? 42. We're trying to go fast. Did you see anything? I mean, <laughs> all right. Did, okay, okay. All right, okay. All, right, all, right. all right, shooter ready. Shooter ready. Stand by. Slow down. What was my time? Doesn't matter what your time is. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Time. All right, all right. Shooter ready. Ready. Stand by. Take your time. There you go. Perfect. Slow down. Slow down. Slow. Take your time. Aim. There you go. Perfect. 126. That was perfect. Okay. Perfect. That was really fast. Yeah. Yeah. See? Okay. And okay. Did you okay. aim? I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, I there did. you go. I did. Why are we here? Um, so this is where I used to do gymnastics. So from age 16 to 18, this was my second home. Okay. Four days a week, five hours a day, Jesus. you know, going to school. Then maybe if you have a job, get mm. some days you work around it. And then gotcha. you have gymnastics right after school. Mm. Go to school, gymnastics, come home, go to bed, do it again. So what did you take from, from all those years of, of doing gymnastics mm -hmm. as much as you did? Is there anything, any particular skill set, any mindset that you took from that that you that you apply today with the shooting that you do? Right, the hard work that you put into it, you need to train. If you want to be somebody, you got to be here and you got to put in the work, and it's gotcha. the same exact thing with shooting. So, as a as a female shooter, right? Mm -hmm. So there are going to be a lot of people who kind of dismiss you and say, "Oh, so she's just a pretty face." Right. right. Um, is there is there a chip on your shoulder from that standpoint? When I first came into it, I kind of I was like, I took it to heart, like. Yeah. No, I'm here to prove something. I want to be good. And like, I did come into the world as, oh, I started modeling. So people kind of brushed me off as, oh, you're just so, a pretty face. Yeah. You don't know how to shoot. So I kind of wanted to prove a point in that aspect of, no, you can model and you can shoot and you can be good. So um, I kind of just ignore those people now. Yeah. Um, and then I just post my videos and, hey, if you choose to see them and you like them, then great. Come by, say positive things yeah. about shooting, and maybe hopefully I can help you. You'll never be satisfied. You'll spend days, weeks, even months obsessing over that one gun. You'll tell yourself things like, it's the only gun I'll ever need. And you'll spend months saving up for that one gun. And when you buy it, you'll be in love for about three days. And then on the fourth, you'll find another gun to fall in love with. Three days later, you're walking into a gun store just to look. 30 minutes later, you're filling out a 4473, telling yourself the AR you just bought is an investment and will only go up in price if Hillary wins. But you know you'd sell your house before you sold your guns. Two months later, you're filling out your 15th 4473, buying another investment. A drug addiction would be cheaper than a gun addiction. The cost of the gun is just the price of admission. Guns don't come with bullets, and there's never a time where they're not selling ammo for crackhead prices. 50 rounds here and there is cool at first, but then you start acting like a sex addict and start buying guns chambered in weird-ass calibers because 9mm just doesn't get you off like it used to. And then there's the accessories. That gun you once loved now starts looking a little weak after spending hours scrolling through picture threads on AR15.com. Now you spend more on parts and accessories to Kardashify your gun than what you spent on the gun to begin with. Oh, and did I mention that your closet isn't a gun safe? 
You can only store your guns like a trap queen for so long before you get so many guns that you have to buy another safe. And they're selling those at crackhead prices too. And then there's the judgment. Buy more than one gun, and all of a sudden you're a ticking time bomb. Buy more than two guns, and then they're reporting you to Homeland Security. Every gathering turns into a low-key intervention session about how you stockpiling weapons of mass destruction is scaring everyone. Then there's that cute girl you just met who you can't seem to get to return your text messages. Two weeks later, you find out she told the sort that she liked you, but after seeing all the guns in your apartment, she thought you were a gang-banging drug dealer. This is the reality of getting in the guns. Sure, they make you happy and are a blast to shoot, protect the lives of the people you love and yourself, but like everything else in this world, there's a dark side. So the next time you're driving down the street and you see a gun store or see that recommended video from that sexy chocolate pro gun YouTuber, do yourself a favor and turn the other way. You don't want these problems. Am I kidding? This shit is fun. All right, so what are we gonna do next? I have two boxes laid out right here. So you're gonna start in one box. You're gonna draw, shoot one, and then move to the next one and shoot another. So what you're working on is not necessarily your shots here. Obviously, you wanna be accurate and hit it, but you're working on your movement, getting to point A to point B quick. So, are there any special rules between moving from box to box? Like, do people shuffle, do people turn and run, or? I like to start facing here, so I'm already ready to move. Okay. And so when I'm going, I step out, and then only get like one or two steps, and then you wanna break down right before the box. Okay. So you break down, and then you come in, and you shoot. Okay, do it again. Okay. <laughs> shoot it ready? Stand by. All right, so I guess I gotta try this out. You gotta now. try it. Shoot it ready. Stand Set. by. But you're not in the box. <laughs> All right, so first, what you wanna do is you wanna aim at the target and then pull the trigger. Oh, yeah. that's what the little red thing on the top is? Right. Got gotcha. right. Take your time. God. Oh my goodness. There you go. Uh. Perfect. All right, so one thing you want to do, like mm. when you think you hit it and you did it, yeah. don't jerk back, because okay. then that's going to take an extra second or whatever it is of your time. Okay. Be quick in your movement. Are you trying to say I'm slow? No. Be quick in your movement, and then once you get in, you already want to have your gun out. Okay. All right, perfect. So this part was great. You need to put that on your first. There you go. Aim, aim, aim. There you go, perfect. 288. Oh, I told you I could do it. There you go. I need your help. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs>For us, when we did the Magpul Dynamics DVDs, those DVDs just did something completely different, which was it just went Changing vertical in, in the gun community. And I remember when we talked about filming, you know, I had, I had said uh, originally there was some talk about, oh, just film us like the, just individually us. Yeah. And I was like, man, if you could film a class, it's like there's so much fun, but I don't know if you could learn off, off watching another student and stuff. And I think when that recipe uh, when Rich Fitzpatrick sat there and kind of looked at it, and I remember him manipulating some of them, going, "No, this isn't good. This isn't mm. good. I'll know it when I see it." And I remember, like, when he saw it, he's like, "That's, That's it." it. Yeah. And then he was willing to throw down the money for it, and that just really changed changed the community yeah. and made it fun. And so many people started getting into shooting. It was crazy. You know what I think it did? I think that is when the idea of training with a firearm became a martial art. In that sense. I think it was always there before, but it was always a training based around the military. And, but I think with those DVDs, what it did is it made that, that, that art form accessible to the regular everyday person. That's true. You know? Yeah. Not, um, not the guy who might know about front sight, gun sight, exactly. Thunder Ranch. Yeah. The classics that were out there. For people like me. And you can say what you want about them. You can criticize them all you want. What it fundamentally made me do was respect it. 
is respect the idea of training. And for a group of people who didn't have military backgrounds, who didn't have firearm backgrounds coming into it, I think that that is more than valuable in terms of what that what that contributed to the community. Because then you got an explosion of people who came into the community and were like, I understand what this is, I, I respect it. So for me, when I say it turned it into a martial art, for instance, like what she does, she is a fitness trainer. I have friends who are, you know, I have a friend who's a black belt in Shoto Khan and, and a lot of those things. And all of those things have heritage, even from the fitness side. And so for me, there's no difference. When I come out and I go to these training schools, it's the exact same thing if I were to go to one of her classes or start taking classes with one of my friends who has a dojo. All of those things come together because they are essentially an art form that have a very practical, functional purpose in life. I think what also made it work too was Magpul's bread and butter wasn't doing DVDs at the time. Yeah. It wasn't the training division. What they did, they already were successful at. So I think for them, this was something that they wanted to educate the public. They wanted to entertain. So you have to have a little bit of entertainment yeah, yeah. to you keep. Think I'm gonna sit there and watch a six hour video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, now when people bring it up, I'm amazed that they still watch it. <laughs> and it, I feel like it's like, you know, it, I, it is dated, so to speak, in regards to, yeah, we do some different things mm. now. Everybody's gonna grow at some point. Absolutely. But um, the other side of it wasn't just to educate and entertaining, it was to motivate. That really kind of changed that perspective, you know, on this on the shooting side and made it, like you said, it was a little bit more obtainable. Nonetheless, I'm thrilled and always glad to be able to learn under you. And I just keep harking back to the days when I first started this and watching the DVDs and learning and and that was that was my process where I was just sucking everything up. And, and I have to say, I've, I haven't had a better shooting experience yeah, this in years, years. Wow. honestly, awesome. no bullshit, than I had these three last days. I, I, I'd be dead serious about that. All right, so what do we got next? So we set up a little course of fire. So you're gonna start in the box. You're gonna walk through, shoot the left target, and then the right, right, and then the left, and then I'm gonna reload. And then I'll come in the box, and once you get in the box, shoot this last six. Shoot it ready. Stand by. Yo! I was blazing. <laughs> Good job. So now you got to do it better. Yeah, I don't know about all that. <laughs> So I definitely could see a lot of stuff we worked on earlier kind of coming into play with this. Right, yeah. yeah. So you did a great job. Uh, you just got to keep moving. Just for, remember to keep moving. Mm -hmm. Even if you're shooting really slow, take your time, but continue to move. Gotcha. You don't want to make if an extra position for yourself. Stuff. Gotcha. Yep. really good up here. You fixed your moving. Okay, good, yeah. good. That's all. That's yeah, what I, was... I mean, even though you, the plate rack took a couple extra rounds, that's fine. You completely fixed what you messed up last, last time. time. You went straight and you kept shooting uh -huh. and you didn't stop. Okay. Yeah. Nice to know, nice to know. Obviously, Michelle's a good liar. One of the unintentional themes of this season of noir, which will be obvious in a few episodes, is that women are really freaking good shooters, which is interesting because all I ever hear from the media is BS about how women can't use firearms to defend themselves from rapists because they'll just have the gun used against them. All I know is any policy that attacks Michelle's right to choose how to protect herself isn't just sexist, it's ignorant as hell. That section with Michelle, mm -hmm. that was really interesting. I mean, I respect the hell out of anyone who puts that much time and effort into educating themselves and training uh, how to use a gun effectively. I mean, that was that was impressive, and you can see why she's doing well competitively. Yep. You uh, learned a bit too, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I'm yeah. always learning because I'm never listening, or I'm learning and forgetting. <laughs> One of the two. What? What? <laughs> what? Nothing. 
You do have your Ray Bans on, so that what is usually wrong with what's wrong with Ray Bans? Usually your Ray Bans are like your your douchebag tail. Like really, you got them on the Ray Bans. Just say, <laughs> but the training was good. Everybody loves Ray Bans. Stop it. And if everybody had a, a, a level of, of training like that, then I think we'd have a lot less gun violence in this country. <laughs> I don't. Why? Absolutely really? not. No. The training has no effect whatsoever on violence. So in this do you think country. that even like the yeah, accidents no, maybe? Just do you think it would like tone down the accidents? In, in terms of accidents, yes. So but then, the thing is, it's like remember, I attribute the violence in this country to people. Sure. So whether or not they're trained or not trained, somebody who wants to be violent is going to be violent. But do you do you think that maybe like the thought process of because when you're training, you're, it's discipline, it's energy, it's effort that you're putting into it. So do you think that maybe that would kind of deter people from doing these things? Just having a more full understanding of what they're Just actually having doing. Having more extensive education in in how to um, effectively use and store. A, a weapon like a gun well, that's would, would I will yeah. never you'll never hear me be against the idea of training or more education. So then I what's just, the you just, just don't want to force people. I, exactly. I don't believe in mandating it. Why? So let me ask you this question. You want to mandate a certain educational requirement a before, standard. for somebody a standard, yeah, so I do. somebody who can own a firearm. Yeah, I do. Which is based on a constitutional right. There's no other constitutional right. Well also that requires the, a mandate. Well, let's be right. real. The constitutional right is based on the militia. It's based on you having a militia. So it's nah. based on training anyway. If you have for a the purpose of right, having but, maintaining no, a militia no, no, the, 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 the a militia being necessary for the preservation of a sure, free state. Sure. So then comma it, the right of the people. Okay. I love commas. Keep and bear arms. I don't like that comma. Shall I, I don't not care. be in French. Yeah. So the, the essence of a militia, so to speak, was for the preservation of a free state. Yes. Right? Right. And then the militia is consistent of who? The people. Yes. Right? And so for well, that reason. Uh, trained no, no, no. She said well regulated. That means oh, well, well regulated. Well, well, well regulated. Well, well, well regulated. No, 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 no. no, no, no. The word regulated. regulated during that time regulated. period regulated. meant well functioning. Okay. At the end of the day, what it boils down to is this. Why in the world would they see a potential problem and say, you know what? We do not want to have this free society fall victim to the very thing that we just had a revolution over, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what? The government, mm -hmm. correct? Why would they then take the idea and the concept of militia and hand the power right back to the government to regulate it? That makes no sense. So then, if that's the case, that makes no sense. Okay, so Why? Here's, here's the thing about governments, and I get what you're saying. I really do. Like, mm -hmm. I, and I, I appreciate that you took the historical aspect into consideration because I think that's important when you're looking at any amendment okay. or any constitutional right. If you know that you should be like, the point of this is to defend yourself against. Let's say, in that case, it was they were worried about the government coming in and saying, you know what, we're gonna do some messed up stuff. They want to be able to fight back against the government, right? Yeah. Like that was the point of the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. so that they couldn't, the government couldn't come in and prevent them from doing that. So it was a check against tyranny. It was a check against tyranny, and I get that, I understand that, and I respect and appreciate that. The point is this: in order to have an effective militia, you have to have a group of people who can come together to check the tyranny with guns, because without them, they can't do that. And there are, and whether you guys want to acknowledge it or not, there is a big group of people out there who have power and influence who do want to ban guns. So what ends up happening- I agree, yeah, I so, believe you. So, so what ends up happening though, so what about, what, about a, what about a mother who has two kids that she's raising on her own, works two jobs, she may not have the, the money nor the time to go out and get the type of training that Antonique did in order to own a firearm. So now we're they're depriving her of her right to own a firearm well, she better based keep on those her guns income safe level. If she's got but two she's, kids at she's home. Doing, but she's doing it based, but you're depriving her based on her income level. That's not right. Especially when we're talking about something that's a constitutional right. What we're saying what is we're, that to the extent that we want education and that at this point is something that you agree is worthwhile, the people who are anti-gun agree is something that would make them feel better about guns. What's what's the holdup? Like, what do you what's, mean? if if you think that the people are intelligent enough to see that, or intelligent enough to have a gun, to own a, a weapon that essentially is used for ending lives, in their own defense, and that's fine, then I think that it's fair for us to require them to get training. Like, Requiring them to get training. To what, to make you feel better? 
Because because requiring them to get training from that perspective, right? You're requiring them at, requiring them to get training to exercise a right that they inherently have. I believe if we get into this uh, well regulated within that concept itself requires a basic level of training. If the idea of the Second Amendment was to serve as a check against the government, right? And the only way that you can have that is by having an armed population of people, an individual right, keep that in mind. We're not talking about a collective where the guns are stored somewhere and then we can go and get them, but they're under the regulation of some other governmental entity. That's not, that, that's not independence, that's not freedom. That's being controlled by another institution, which completely undermines the concept of the Second Amendment. No, the idea of it is that each individual person who is free in this country has the right to own a firearm so that in the event we are dealing with a tyrannical government, we can come together and check it.